For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Uh, welcome back to a time of devotion. I'm going to center myself a little bit here. I uh, apologize for missing last week. It just got a little caught up in the shuffle. Um, but I do miss doing it and miss uh, sharing with all of you in the middle of the week. It's sort of my reminder, and, and hopefully yours if you need the reminder, uh, that our whole week is supposed to be sacred and devoted to God in some way. Um, if we just think this is about what we do on Sunday, we're, we're missing a lot. And, and I need that reminder as much as anyone. Um, the only thing I really want to note is that uh, the 27th is the yard sale. Uh, be on the lookout for stuff uh, to donate to the yard sale. Plan to be there. and That's just always a fun time uh, in the community. But let, let's pray and spend a little time in Proverbs. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open and all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may truly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to read just the first... Eh, I'm going to read 21 verses of chapter 8 of Proverbs. I'm skipping over chapter 7, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. Does not wisdom call... And does not understanding raise her voice. On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portal she cries out. To you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. O simple ones, learn prudence, acquire intelligence, you who lack it. Hear, for I will speak noble things, and from my lips will come what is right. For my mouth will utter truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are righteousness. There is nothing twisted or crooked in them. They are all straight to one who understands and right to those who find knowledge. Take my instruction instead of silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than jewels and all that you may desire cannot compare with her. I, wisdom, live with prudence and I attain knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. Pride and arrogance and the way of evil and perverted speech I hate. I have good advice and sound wisdom. I have insight and strength. By me kings reign and rulers decree what is just. By me rulers rule and nobles all who govern rightly. I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently find me. Riches and honor are with me, enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit is better than gold, even fine gold, and my yield than choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness along the paths of justice, endowing me with wealth those who love me and filling their treasures. So I skipped to chapter 8, because chapter 7, and you're welcome to read it, uh, it's all again about, it's a warning against Adultery is what your Bible might say. Um, and it is a warning against uh, committing adultery uh, for those of us married or committed uh, in committed relationships. But adultery, especially in the Old Testament, is also usually a metaphor for uh, our life with the Lord. Uh, that it is very easy to turn to false idols. But the language in there is a little tough, and I felt like I sort of already covered that topic of um, fidelity to God and to one another. And then I went on to chapter 8, and it really felt like something I'd already read about two chapters ago in Proverbs. Yeah, I get it. Wisdom's better than silver and gold, etc., etc. But when I read scripture, I always try to remember someone saw this as so important to write down and we've preserved it and authorized it as the word of God. And I think today, uh, reading that, which seems like a lot of earlier things that are said in Proverbs, 
um, is a reminder that sometimes we need reminders. <laughs> It is not usually enough to say something or do something once. Uh, if I need to do something, I put two reminders in my phone and write a note, and, and I also tell Erin uh, so she can remind me too. I just tend to be forgetful. And so um, if, I haven't, if you haven't noticed that in the past four years, sometimes I need a reminder uh, to get myself back on track. This is how people are. If you uh, want to start getting healthy and exercising, it's probably not enough to do it once. Um, you might need to set yourself some reminders and you may need to um, build a habit that is gonna be very difficult. I have had periods in my life where I have not really exercised for a period of time and getting back into that regular routine, uh, it takes a few days to remember, oh, I have to get up and do this. And then once it sets in, you hardly notice. Seeking to follow Jesus, to do what is right and just, seeking to be truly wise, um, sometimes takes a few reminders from us. I hope it would not be surprising if I said to you, there are lots of people who go to church every Sunday who don't seem to have gotten it. That's not speaking to anyone in particular, but um, we can all probably name people who call themselves Christians who we don't think live up to the values of Jesus. I hesitate to name any. But we need reminders because the world is full of distractions. Sometimes we need to read it four or five times, listen to my voice and not those, my being God, to get it right. And so Proverbs, again, um, we're going to get into some little sayings and things that are really what interests me about the Proverbs. But um, even those of us who call ourselves faithful, those of us who call ourselves Christians, who try to lead faithful lives, we all, every once in a while, need to take stock. Look at our lives and say, is this right? Is this just? Am I living a life in line with God and the teachings of the church? There are lots of idols out there, lots of tools for the devil to use. And sometimes they come disguised as Christian things. That's how the devil works. And so to return to the word of God, the life of Christ and his teachings, um, is our reminder to keep turning, to keep going to the Lord, to keep resetting ourselves. One thing I have learned uh, from reading John Wesley, uh, and also in my, my life and, and experience, is salvation requires repentance. We have to take stock of our sins, confess them to God, and seek to not sin anymore. But even if you have repented and found yourself faithful and believing, even if you believe uh, your place in the next life is set because you have handed your sins over to God, as we walk the life of faith, we will have more to repent for. We keep sinning. And so, as we try to walk with Jesus, which is what we do in the Easter season and, and throughout the whole church here, it is a way forward, but it is also looking backward, taking stock and turning continually away from our sins.
I am sometimes guilty of this, but a really big red flag uh, in life and for, some, for Christians is people who refuse to apologize, who refuse to admit their faults or change their mind. For some reason, people are distractible. <coughs> Excuse me. But thankfully, God has blessed us with a lot of reminders. And so, you know, if you read your Bible, things will seem repetitive, especially if you're in long stretches of Jeremiah or the Proverbs, or if you're reading four Gospels in a row. But it's repetitive for a reason, because we need the reminder. If you uh, live life in the church, you will live, hopefully, dozens and dozens of Easter's and dozens and dozens of Lent's. But we need those reminders to repent, those reminders of Christ's salvation. Sometimes it feels to me like I've got maybe four or five sermons that I sort of rotate in and find different pieces to fit in them. I, I hope it doesn't seem that way to you, but maybe that's okay. The life of faith is not necessarily hard, or it's not complicated always, but it is hard, and that's why God has given us lots of reminders. Let's pray. Lord, help us to realign ourselves with you, to continually take stock of where we have fallen short, to know your salvation and love even when we fall short, and help us to continually turn to you, that you might be glorified in all of our lives and all of our days. And we pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. Uh, go in peace. Uh, we'll, uh, there's a few more Sundays in Easter, and, and Pentecost is coming. Um, we would love to see you uh, in worship on Sunday, and at, at all the events, uh, fun events we're planning for the coming weeks and months. God bless.